Okay, uh, let's see. There we go. Change my background, it looks awful over here. <laughs> That's a little better. All right, excellent. Um, let's see. All right, excellent. Welcome, everybody. Let me share my screen. All right, can uh, everybody see my screen? Yes, Professor. All right, awesome. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, just a, a really quick um, overview of where we've been. Uh, where we've been. Uh, we're we're starting the second week. Uh, actually, today's the last day for the of the second week. Uh, last last week we uh, got uh, got you started with the uh, first assignment, and uh, we shared some source code with you so that uh, you could go on and complete that. And um, you know all the assignments are going to be like that. Whenever we are introducing a new technology, um, in this case, we were talking about HTML and CSS and Bootstrap and responsive design. Uh, you can expect that uh, that 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 week where we're introducing a new technology, uh, we will give you a lot of uh, source code to get you started, uh, so that you're not starting from 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 nothing. And um, so we're going to give you a lot of hand holding. Um, you know trying to get you as far as we can with the assignment without actually completing the assignment. Uh, and then, you know, the expectation is that you take that uh, with you and either, you know, you're, you're welcome to use all that source code as is um, verbatim and reuse that. Uh, but obviously, you know, tweaking it so that it matches the requirements of the, of the assignment uh, uh, as described in the, in the, in the documentation. Uh, or you can decide to just ignore it, right? Uh, and and do your source uh, your source code. Just write it all uh, yourself uh, from scratch. Uh, you're you're welcome to either way, right? Um, and now the the way I'm going to implement the the the, the demos I'm going to follow best practices. Uh, I'm I'm going to discuss why we're doing it this way and not other ways, right? I'm going to do several several concepts as I talk and as I do live coding. Uh, and the intent is that you know you you can you should be able to reuse as much of the code that we give you, again with some caveats, some uh, uh, tweaking here and there. Uh, so, so as we progress uh, through the semester, we will handhold you less and less. Uh, we we um, I mean, on whatever technology that we that we are introducing, that particular technology we're going to handhold you a lot, right? We'll we'll give you a lot of starting code. Uh, give you lots and lots of examples and source code that you can use, uh, but we will focus m less and less on previous technologies. Okay, so for instance, uh, next week when we talk about the second assignment, uh, you know we're going to be introducing a lot of JavaScript, jQuery, and so we're going to you know give you a lot of uh, starting code for that particular technology, but much less on you know on any HTML or styling or responsive design. Uh, that you'll be, you know, more and more responsible to complete that on your own, right? Um, uh, also, the um, the the assignment, as 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 we mentioned in earlier uh, lectures, the we are implementing a online learning management system uh, throughout the semester, right? So there's about eight nine assignments, right? And they all work together to build this one single application, right? And and the intention is that you work. With, on these assignments on your own, uh, obviously with with my source code that I gave you to get you started, uh, but then you work on that individually, right? And you complete that. Uh, the first half of the semester, that um, that learning management system is going to be focused on um, implementing something for the for the faculty, right? So as a faculty, uh, I, I you know I'm able to look at uh, all the courses uh, that I'm teaching. Uh, I'm able to select a particular course, and uh, when I go into that course, I can, um, you know, I can add uh, modules, right? I can edit those those modules. I can, I can add widgets. So we're going to do building something like this 
um, obviously not as sophisticated, not as, uh, not as pretty perhaps, uh, we'll be building our own online learning, learning management system. Okay, we're gonna refer to it as a whiteboard, as opposed to blackboard uh, that, uh, that, that um, many of us uh, you know, had a hard time with. Uh, so yeah, so the first half, we're gonna focus on the faculty. The second half of the semester, we're gonna focus on implementing some use cases that are useful for students. Okay, so for instance, the, the, uh, the faculty one, you'll be able to create content and the student one, you're gonna be able to consume that content. Okay, so that's, that's the intention of the assignments. Now, there's also a, a final project, right? That you're gonna be working together in a team Right, that I see folks having already created some groups and having invited uh, some some folks, and so I'd like to go over that uh, today. We'll go over the final project requirements, and uh, and and you know I, I invite you to get started as soon as possible. Right, the earlier the better. So we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, so just a couple of things here. Uh, the syllabus obviously is. Um, um, uh, I did add. Uh, to the syllabus, a section that contains the um, the GitHub uh, users users, so that you can uh, share your code with uh, with us. Right, so I see not everybody has added it, but most of us are there. Uh, so please use those uh, uh, GitHub accounts to invite myself, all the TAs. Okay. Um, also, uh, let's see. Let me go back. Ah, uh, professor. Yes. Hi, um, can I just ask like a, a question about assignment one? Sure. Um, I'm just wondering like, it, like th it truly is just like a wireframe, like just like static yes. content, right? Like, Correct. because like you could obviously like implement almost something that resembles like a fully functioning website, which just with just like, you know, the bootstrap built in JavaScript libraries and things like that. But um, like if right. it if it if it has the the look of the four um, screenshots that you put in the assignment, then like we're pretty much good, right? Like the yes. functionality doesn't matter. Yeah, the, exactly. There's no functionality. There's no behavior. All this is completely static. The only thing that is dynamic is that you can navigate from one page to the next. Okay, is, right. that is the only thing that is dynamic. Um, you know, if, if, if you're in a, a industrial setting, it's very common that. Uh, and you know, this would be part of the beginning of requirements gathering uh, process, right? Where uh, folks are, you, know, you have a, uh, you have a client, and the, and you know you're you're uh, providing them with uh, some prototypes, early prototypes of what the application might look like, and uh, and and I mean obviously you could do it as a with a PowerPoint slides, or you can do it with a Photoshop. Uh, or you can create a very thin client, uh, which you can put together some widgets. Uh, and, and then demonstrate what this might look like at some point when it's going to be fleshed out entirely. And it's useful as a tool uh, for folks to elicit questions and, you know, a, a, and then get gather some requirements from the, from the client. And then you know, without having had uh, the, all the development of, of making it for real, right? So, it's a, it's a, so that's, that's what we're, what we're building, kind of like the first prototype uh, of, of what we're going to be creating for the rest of the semester, making it for real. Yep. Clarify. All right. Let's see. This is a question on the chat. Uh, are we um, supposed to make it work on Spring Boot? Make it work on Spring Boot. I mean, we are using the server, the Spring Boot server that is hosting the um, these uh, four or five uh, web pages, uh, and yes, they are running on Spring Boot. Uh, we are using Spring Boot right now as a just a server that can host all this static content. Uh, eventually, a lot of this uh, HTML that we're writing and all this CSS, we're going to migrate all that HTML into a React JS um, um, project, uh, and uh, and we will use this uh, HTML to then uh, you know make it dynamic uh, by embedding it inside of JavaScript. Uh, to do, you know, iterations and if statements and handle clicks and drags and whatnot. Uh, this is a naive type questions. Why are we creating a server for A1? Can't we create a website without having a server? Uh, yes, you can. Um, we, we uh, you know, typically, uh, we, you know, since, since we're going to be hosting this on Heroku, uh, this is 
this is a first uh, approach at uh, creating a server that can host content. Um, you know, it could be just um, you know ASCII files, HTML files that are not hosted by by any server. Uh, but you know, this this obviously has a a a plan uh, of uh, uh, where we where we are going to need a server at some point deployed onto uh, Heroku. And so we're gonna get we want to get you started. Uh, you know, deploying these things and hosting this on the on a remote server. Um, right now, it's only going to be static, but at some point, uh, we are going to need the server to, um, you know, come back with JavaScript and, and then provide data uh, that we can uh, handle and render dynamically on the on the client. So definitely, we'll need the server at some point. Uh, um, can I ask a question regarding uh, sure. the submissions? So. <clears throat> I think on the syllabus it says that we are submitting a link to a repository for, for each assignment. This, yes. Can we have a repository for the class with all the assignments inside, or does each assignment need to be a separate repository? Uh, yeah, no, so, um, so there are the number of repositories and the assignments have no correlation. Uh, so for instance, for the first two assignments, uh, you are going to be using the same exact Java repository that you created today uh, the, for the first assignment. For the second assignment, you will use exactly the same repository. And, and you're, it's not like you're going you're to create uh, one project for assignment one and one project for assignment two. Uh, they're all, they're both, the first two assignments are going to be sharing the same exact repository. Uh, that repository and the Java repository uh, is going to be dormant for two assignments while we introduce React.js. Um, so that you know, we'll have the server going. Uh, we're going to switch over in assignment three, four, three, three and four. Uh, we'll introduce React.js, uh, and um, and that will be its own repository. Uh, at some point, when we get to assignment five and six, right? We're going to have these two repositories talk to one another, right? Where the client is uh, rendering the front end, and the server can now host some data. And we're going to have the client ask for data from the server. The server is going to respond with data, and then the front end is going to dynamically render that content dynamically. All right. So, so this this will be this will become its own architecture, and you know each one with its own repository uh, that are going to collaborate with one another. Uh, later on in the second half of the, of the semester, we're going to introduce Node.js, right? A third uh, server uh, that uh, is uh, going to is going to you know, talk to a database and whatnot, MongoDB. And that's going to be a third uh, repository. Again, hosted, all of these hosted on Heroku. So you're going to have three different applications talking to one another, uh, some of them providing backend uh, data and data access in a database. Uh, and whereas the front end, uh, you know, asking for this data dynamically uh, and, and then rendering it uh, dynamically on the, on the front end. So yeah, so, so it's not like you're going to have uh, one repository per assignment. Uh, so um, we, we're going to have you know, two servers and a client all talking to one another all throughout you know, uh, eight or nine assignments. That clarifies it. Thank you. Um, OK, so right now, notice that I've, I've hosted here, I listed here the link to the Java server. Uh, and uh, we're going to use it for another assignment, assignment one and assignment two. In assignment three, we're going to introduce React.js. I'm going to I'm going to get you started with that. I'm going to share the repository for the React.js when we get to it down here. When we do the Node.js repository, there'll be a separate repository, and I'll share with you here as well. OK. Uh, all right, so uh, let's, um, yeah, so remember, we have the office hours listed here. Uh, we have the YouTube videos are, are being uh, added to a playlist that you can access through here. The, 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 these lectures should also be available through Zoom as well. And um, also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you'll be notified when you uh, a, a new a new video gets uploaded. Uh, so let's talk about the final project and the requirements because I want you get folks to get started on that as soon as you can. So here's a the web the web uh, final project. Okay. All right, so for this project, you're, you're going to be uh, in teams um, between teams of size one and four. Uh, again, I had mentioned earlier that I thought one was a little bit too small, uh, and I thought maybe four is a little bit too big. 
And so I think a, the, the right size team would be somewhere between two and three. It's a good size. Uh, but you're welcome to uh, to explore using, you know, explore your uh, project management skills <laughs> at dealing with larger teams. Um, so so you're, you're asked to build a website that has at least the following screens or pages, okay? The, the um, uh, you need to create a home screen or landing screen, right? That uh, uh, is either mapped to slash home or mapped to just plain all slash, right? Or slash index, I guess. Uh, and, um, and that's your entry point to, the, uh, to your website, okay? So that website, that entry is uh, needs to be uh, smart. It needs to be dynamic, right? So that uh, if I go in there and I haven't logged in yet, I should see content that I'm going to call anonymous content, content for folks that we don't know who you are. Okay, and that content needs to be dynamic, and you know, print out, you know, display things that are about the, you know, any any new things that have occurred. Uh, in the um, you know lately in your website right For, and now you can you can you can um, you can uh, you can create your project about any topic that you want you're free to choose whatever topic now for the assignments I have chosen the topic right which is an online learning management system okay for the project you are free to choose whatever whatever topic you want right discuss it with your team members and you can decide whatever you want now. Uh, say I'm going to use often the the example of an you know online uh, movie sharing or discussion board or something like that, and uh, so I'm going to use that often as an example. Uh, so if I if I come in and into my into my movie um, forum website, if I come to my landing page, what I might see here is uh, perhaps uh, uh, you know the the latest movie that has been reviewed. Or the latest movie that folks have, uh, you know, uh, given a, a rough uh, thumbs down, or you know, maybe the latest person who, ha who has um, joined the uh, the uh, the the community. Okay, so so this this should be displayed uh, as you know ran randomly or dynamically uh, whenever you visit the landing page, right? Uh, I can also log in and identify myself. I can register and join the community by creating a new account. Uh, and now, if I if I come if I have logged in and the application knows who I am, and I come to the landing page, the landing page uh, will not only display the anonymous content, meaning the random, you know, what's the latest thing that's that's uh, that's happening in your website, but it's also going to display something that is particular to me. Right, it might it might greet me and say, "Hey, welcome back, Alice." Okay, and um, uh, or maybe show me some preferences. Uh, you know, my favorite movie, my my favorite TV show, or anything that um, that uh, you you might be tracking uh, in a database uh, for your application. So, so yeah, so the home screen should be you know fairly uh, um, interesting. And it should also be obvious what the application is all about. Um, you know, don't, you know, don't do like a Google, right. That, uh, you know, they, they, they just show just a, a search bar and that's it. Right. And, and because it's Google, you know what to do. Uh, but, you know, until you're not Google, uh, then, then, then you be, make your application clear on what it is that you want me to do with your application. Okay. So from the home screen, I can, um, maybe I can go to log in uh, you know, I can log in perhaps. Or register from the home page, uh, but more interesting, I can uh, navigate to a search screen. Uh, now this search screen is mapped to slash search, okay, and the slash search should allow me to type some kind of search query, right? And, and this depends on what it is that your website is about, right? If it's a financial institution, maybe you can type uh, a stock, okay? If um, you know, if it's a food uh, application, then maybe I can type in some ingredients or the name of a recipe or a dish, okay? Uh, or if this is a sports fan kind of application, maybe I can type the name of a team, right? Um, or a particular sport, okay? So it depends for you what, it, what this means, right? And so th this search uh, should allow you to type in something. It could be just a, a single input field or it could be several input fields with 
drop downs and check boxes and radio buttons or whatever, right? It's up to you um, and that how is it that I'm going to search for, for whatever I can search. Now, whenever I search something, the uh, search is gonna go against not your database. Uh, it's not gonna go against your system. It's gonna go against some cloud service. Uh, it's gonna go out to some something on the cloud that uh, is providing this API for free. Okay, so, so that uh, you can send your request, your query to this API and the API will come back with some response. Okay, and that response uh, should come back as some kind of collection of things that match your search criteria. Okay, uh, so you should, you should um, you know, identify an API that uh, might interest you for the particular domain uh, or the topic that, of interest. So for instance, if I'm, if I'm using movies, uh, I have an a um, I have a an API that I use that I pay for. Although there's a free version of this, it's called the OMDB API, and you can ask questions about movies and TV shows and things like that, right? And the way you use this is that you you register. They give you an a key, right, which is a secret like a password uh, that then you need to uh, append to this query to this URL, okay? And you can ask things such as uh, you can give give the title of a movie or a TV show, uh, and and then and then it, it gives you a response of of what movies or TV shows match your criteria. So, for instance, here's an example. There it is. So here I, I can ask for Batman. See that? I can say I can add as part of the URL uh, the a title or or for of a movie, uh, and then I provide my my um, a, my secret key. If I do that, it comes back with data, right? And this data that they curate, they own, right? They maintain, you know, they are the, the source of truth. Now, it would make no sense for me to recreate this, right? They already have this information. Uh, I don't want to have to maintain this. They do all this um, on their own. And I pay them, you know, it's more like a donation. And so the response comes back in a format called JSON or JavaScript object notation. Uh, basically, it's an object. There it is. It's an object that has three, uh, three properties. Uh, the first property is an array. It's an array of objects. Okay, and each one of these objects uh, is the the results, the search results for uh, the movie Batman. So, and notice that it provides some kind of summary information. Not a lot of details. That's fine, right? It's it's only meant to respond only with ten items. Uh, although I think there's a total of 404 items that match my criteria, this API also allows you to paginate, you know, give me 10 and then give me another 10 and give me another 10. Uh, it, so it provides the title of the movie, the year it came out, the IMDB, the type and the poster. The poster, you can click on it, right? And it gives you a, you know, an image of the poster uh, that you can use maybe, you know, with JavaScript or React, uh, you can use it to iterate uh, and display this maybe as a grid of movies or maybe like a table, right? And you can use maybe some thumbnails. Um, and, but notice that it's, it's not a lot of information. Uh, so it's, it's perfect for displaying some kind of summary, uh, which is exactly what it say here. So when you search for something, you would display some kind of summary, summarize list here, okay? Of, that, of, those, of those search results. Okay, make sense? Uh, professor? Yes. Uh, quick question. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand exactly what you're looking for in terms of the API. So it sounds like we need to make like some kind of, uh, parameterized, parameterized, um, API call basically. Um, that, but like two things, I guess, like one, could it not be a search and two, if it isn't a search, does it have to be something that's driving our application? Uh, Yes, uh, I, I would I would say that that's one of the main uh, re re requirements. And now they they I I, I my hope is that uh, these requirements are going to be um, fine for eighty to ninety percent of the projects. Uh, there's always 10, 20 percent of folks who might want to do something completely different, uh, and that's that's uh, that's okay. We will work with you if you want to do something. Uh, either somewhat different or radically different, that's fine. Um, and, uh, and, and certainly we can, we can discuss and we can negotiate. Um, and like two so ideas I had off the top of my head in terms of APIs would be 
um, one um, possibly um, like a, a social media or some kind of um, social API that allows us to um, get do like uh, authorization, you know what I mean? Like for, you know, log in through Google, something like that. Uh, is that too basic? That That's too basic. Yeah. Right. Um, and what about like something like a payment API? Payment API, maybe like PayPal or uh, things like that. That that would be a little more interesting. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Just want to like kind of yeah. get a gauge. Thank you. Uh, but that too is uh, still uh, somewhat uh, somewhat basic. It's uh, just a couple calls and and just a a, a, a forward uh, where you have to have a, a URL that you have to listen to. Uh, that's that's still a little bit too simple. Uh, I would I would I would um. But definitely we can we can negotiate. Uh, so, for instance, we might drop some some requirement uh, of, uh, of which I'll, I'll list in a minute, and, and then say, okay, well, if you want to do that, maybe you can drop some other requirement. Uh, and as long as they are um, you know, comparable in um, in complexity, uh, then totally we we can we can negotiate that as uh, uh, just just fine. Okay, so come. So if if you think that your idea that you want to build is uh, you know, is within the requirements that are listed here. You don't need to ask for permission. You can go on and just do it, right? Um, and, and do your thing. But if you think that um, uh, that you're not quite sure that uh, if, if what I'm building matches the requirements that are here, please see me and, uh, and we can certainly negotiate and, and, and you know, and make it work. Um, okay, so yeah, so you gotta go out to the, to the cloud and get a response. Um, if you if you then um, use another API and you take the unique identifier of one of these objects that came back, right, and use uh, another uh, uh, attribute here and provide the ID of the movie, uh, you'll get a response that is, uh, has met much more uh, details uh, about that specific object. So for instance, here's a full title of the movie, the year, the rating, the release, as a genre, the director, the writer, the plot, the actors, right? It also has um, uh, ratings from various uh, services such as IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, so it has a lot of more information, right? So, so you could uh, use this uh, for displaying some detail screen, right? So that if you click and you select a particular uh, movie, it navigates to a detail screen where uh, you, can, you can do a, an additional query to the, to, the, uh, to the service and come back and retrieve a lot more information and display um, a much thorough, uh, in-depth um, information about that particular object, okay? Now this object, uh, this, uh, this page here is going to be a, uh, a mixture of two types of content. One of them is gonna come from the third-party API, right? So for making, making this kind of call, right? Uh, so, so you, you retrieve that data, you, uh, you display that content. And the second half of this page, right, should contain information uh, about, this, about this movie or about this object, but, but data that you are keeping track yourself in your own database, right? Um, so this is going to be like a merging of data coming from a remote database and data coming from a local database. So in your local database, uh, you're going to keep track of, of the users, right, that have registered or are logging in and their profile information, right? Um, you're also going to keep track of uh, data that they might create, right? So, for instance, me, as I log in as Alice, I might navigate to a particular movie and I might leave a comment or I might leave a review or thumbs up, thumbs down, or so many stars out of five, right? So all that information needs to be stored somewhere. And so, so that is gonna be stored in a local database, okay? Uh, so, so if you do have information about a particular movie, right, uh, locally in your database, you can use that ID to look into your database about all the folks that have commented on the movie or left a like or left a, a thumbs down or a score or whatever, right? And you're going to collate all that information and display it down here. Right, so it's going to be uh, like a merge of data coming from two data sources. Okay. Now, from this uh, data source down here, um, uh, you can display, for instance, the username who 
created that content, right? That created that you are that uh, review, that uh, comment, that thumbs up, or whatever. Uh, and if you click on their username, it should take you to their profile. Okay. Uh, so when you navigate to somebody's profile, it should be mapped to slash profile slash the ID of the user that um, that you are visiting. Okay. Uh, since you're visiting somebody else's profile, it's not your profile. Uh, then that profile should contain uh, some portions that are publicly available and some portions that are private that no one should see, right? And that's up to you what that is, right? It's up to you to decide, oh, I'll show this, but not that over there, okay? That's up to you. Um, also, in that profile, uh, there should be a, um, a, a, a set of lists, right, that are, of somehow uh, available to me all the things that are related to that user, okay? So for instance, if that user you know, wrote an article about that movie and I'm visiting you, well, that article, at least the title of that article should be available here, right? So the profile should contain everything that a user is related to, okay? A user might be related to other users. You know, maybe I'm following folks or folks are following me. Right. Or, you know, I reviewed this movie. I gave a thumbs up to that other movie, thumbs down over there. Right. And so all those things that are related to me should be listed here in my profile. OK, so that if I click on them, if I click on a particular review or thumbs up or thumbs down, I, that should allow me to go back to the details page so I can see what it is that you didn't like. Uh, or what other movie you left a comment or this other movie that you rated, I should be able to see the object that, uh, that uh, or if, um, if, I, if I can see the people that are following you uh, or that you are following. So if I click on it, you know, I would navigate to the profile of those people, okay? Now, if I'm logged in, oh, by the way, all this, right, all this is, um, Anybody can, can, uh, can use this, right? Even if I'm not logged in, right? I can go and search. And if I search, I can see the details. Even if I'm not logged in, I can navigate to somebody's profile. I can't see their private details, right? Um, I don't have my own profile because I'm not logged in. And, and if I try to create a content, maybe a comment or uh, do a thumbs up or whatever, uh, then I should be uh, challenged with a login and says, ah, you know, if you want, right? So, 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 unless I, I don't, if I'm not creating any content, I could be anonymous. I don't need to log in. Now, if I do log in, right, the application should allow you to join the community and be able to log in. I, I would, I would be able to navigate to my own profile. Notice that the profile here doesn't have the ID of the user. Uh, it doesn't have it. Um, uh, doesn't, doesn't have it encoded as part of the URL. Uh, that means that the information somewhere the, between the client and the server, they have to figure out who is this person who's logged in, right? So for that, we'll need to know how to handle cookies and how to track people, uh, how to store session information on the server, right? So we'll, we'll work on that, on, uh, on, on how to do that. Now, because I'm logged into my own profile, not only can I see my public things, not only can I see everything that's related to me, I can also see any private information about myself. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's the project. Now here. Um, so last last semester we worked on a privacy policy. It's an additional page that uh, you might you might need to write. I'm not sure if we're going to do that this semester. Last time I had a guest speaker and spoke all all things about privacy and security and all that. And and he had a small tiny assignment where you wrote a policy page. So I'm not quite sure if we're going to do that this semester. So assume that this is not the case for now. Um, you know, you can ignore this and see if, uh, if we're going to do that. I'm not sure. OK, so all, my, this, my, all what I have described here for the home, the search, the detail, the profile, the login is listed here. Right? So for the home page requirements, for the profile page requirements, there's a whole bunch of must, must, must. These are hard requirements, right? You have to do this. And again, if you have other ideas that you want to do instead, we can negotiate. We can uh, say, okay, well, uh, instead of doing this, how about you do that, okay? Uh, but 
As far as uh, the requirements is concerned, this applies to everybody. And, and you and you and you and you reach out to me if you want to do something different. Uh, so here's the research and results page, the details page. So everything I've discussed discussed earlier. Login, register, blah blah blah. Again, pol privacy policy. Let's assume we're not doing that uh, this semester. Um, let's see if this uh, gentleman uh, reaches out and and um, and see if I can bring him back uh, for the for the conversation. Uh, styling. Um, so no, we are going to be talking about styling when we talk about CSS and when we talk about HTML and Bootstrap. Uh, Bootstrap is a really simple way of making things responsive. Um, uh, but uh, but certainly the, uh, the the application that you build needs to be just as useful uh, in a desktop application as it can be in a small tablet or phone. Right. So all the features should be available and should be able to be used on. On, on small screen and large screen. So make sure that that you visit your page with your with your phone, that it's responsive, that things are not overlapping one on top of another, that things are wrapping correctly, right? That you don't have double scroll bars uh, horizontally. And, you know, make sure that you only have a vertical scroll bar. I mean, in certain cases, you, you it is okay to have a horizontal scroll bar. Uh, like if, for instance, if you have like a table that doesn't fit. On your screen, and that it's it protrudes beyond the edge of the screen, then it's okay for the for that table to scroll. You don't scroll the entire page, only that one table, right? Or if you have an image that is oversized and you've zoomed in, and you need to you know pan in and pen and then you need to move the the main image around, then that makes sense to have uh, scroll bars there, vertical and horizontal. But otherwise, right, if you don't have a good reason, you should never have a horizontal scroll bar, only a vertical scroll bar. So anyway, uh, so you can use CSS libraries. Uh, I suggest uh, Bootstrap, but if you want to uh, use um, uh, Material Design or or some other libraries, so feel free. Uh, if you find a um, you know a very beautiful uh, CSS library that would make things for you to uh, look very very polished and professional, go right ahead. You can do totally. You can do that on the project, not on the assignment. You can do it on the project. Uh, white spacing, you know, make sure that things um, are nicely spaced out, right? That you have enough white spaces on the left and, and right. You have padding, you have margin. Things, things are justified to the left or to the right, depending on whether they're text or currency or numbers or dates, right? That things are nicely wrapping, okay? Um, uh, navigation, make sure that it's clear. Maybe you can go back. Right, that that you have the buttons that that uh, are that you need for uh, you know, moving on. Right, make sure that the, there's a nice contrast that you don't have like black on black or you know dark or, on dark or light on light that you can't see. Uh, make sure that everything's labeled. Uh, you know, look and feel. You know, the your website, your final project needs to look polished and needs to look professional. Right, this is um you know the intent is that by the end of the semester. You're going to have completed the assignment, which builds a an applica application, and you will have completed the this project that you worked on with your team members, right? And the idea is that you know you should be able to have this in, in maybe in public repository, maybe both of them deployed on Heroku, right? And you can totally use this as a you know an, a, as a portfolio that you can show off uh, to your potential employer. And see, oh, look! All the great things we did, right? And you can describe it, uh, you know, very, um, uh, very effectively, and and you're very self-confident, uh, and describe all the great technology that you use, and all the best practices, and all the industry-leading standards that you that you used for implementing uh, this this website. So, absolutely, you know, we hope that by the end of the semester, you have you know two nice things that you've de you've, you've developed, and you can talk about it, you know, intelligently. Uh, obviously, it should be consistent. You know, the color scheme should be consistent. The padding should be the, the same. The white spaces should be should be consistent. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about some more user experience. Architectural, right? You know, make sure that you use all the architecture to, uh, discussions that descriptions that we are going to be talking about throughout the semester. You know, model view controller, com um, components and events, and state management. Uh, user requirements. So there's a requirement that you need to have at least two human users that are very distinct from one another, right? That are 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 using your website, 
okay, that they can log in either say as a, they can log in as a faculty or student, they can log in as a buyer or a seller, uh, they, can, uh, they, they can log in as a book author uh, or a book reviewer. Uh, so whatever, whatever it is that you, wanna, you want to uh, implement, there, there has to be uh, two distinct human users that are using your website. And depending on how I log in, there, there should be some distinction of what the user interface does. Uh, whether I log in as a, a faculty and I can add content, or if I log in as a student, I have only read only, right? If I if I log in as a um, a seller, I can create project, uh, I can create uh, products, I can change their 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 uh, prices. Uh, if I'm a, if I log in as a buyer, I can't change the prices, right? So there has to be you know distinct things that one user can do, but not the other. Uh, so here I have a couple of examples. You also need to support an anonymous user. You know, somebody who has not logged in, I don't know who you are, and I have to provide you with a minimal set of features. Um, now each user, each user that, that you create has to have, they have to be able to create something, right? Meaning, you know, do some action that will insert something in the database. Uh, they need to be able to read something, meaning, they, have, they should be able to uh, make some kind of query to your database and display content on your database, from your database onto user interface. They should be able to update something. They should be able to delete something. So imagine, you know, I like a movie and I write a scathing report review about a movie I didn't like, right? So that's creating. I should be able to update it. Well, I should, maybe I should come back tomorrow and, and add some more to my review because I, I hate it even more. Or I can delete it because uh, you know I thought I, I I was too rude and I I can remove it. Okay, so users should have CRUD operations, right? It doesn't have to be on the same object. It doesn't have to be all about movies, right? You decide what are the operations, and they can complement each other. Uh, do we need an admin page? So an admin uh, user could be one of the types of users. You could have an admin user and a normal user, and those are the, your two users. So you don't have to have you know two users and an admin. You know the admin could be one of the roles. Um, okay, web service requirements. So, so you're going to be um, you're going to be using a, um, your query like I'm doing here and talking to MDB, uh, uh, but this is not RESTful, right? This is not necessarily RESTful and retrieving data, you're going to implement your RESTful API, right, that you are going to be using so you can talk to your database, okay? Uh, so, so that uh, your, you know, whenever, whenever your API, whenever your user interface uh, needs some data about, you know, users uh, being logged in and who's currently logged in and profile information and, the, and the, the, somebody's uh, preferences and their favorite movie, blah, 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 that is going to go against your database, right? And, and to access your database, you're gonna expose it through a RESTful web service. So we'll learn how to create RESTful uh, web services to do that. Uh, database requirements, you can either use a relational database or non-relational database, or, uh, so in, in this course, we're gonna be covering MySQL and MongoDB, or you can use any database that you feel comfortable. If you prefer using Firebase, go ahead, uh, you know, whatever database you feel comfortable with, Postgres, Right, it's up to you. But we're going to be covering MySQL as a relational database and Mongo as a non-relational database. Uh, now, data model. So any 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 record or table or uh, that that you that you build, right? So if you have a couple of tables, uh, that each you you'll need to create code that uh, can manipulate that data, right? Either in Java or JavaScript. And, and so we're going to refer to that as the data model, right? That, that uh, is running in your CPU that's talking to a database. So, so your data model should allow you to create, create instances of, that, uh, of that, those records. You should be able to retrieve a single record, retrieve all the records, or retrieve a record given a predicate, uh, update records, and delete records. So you need to create a data model that allows you to manipulate that data through this, uh, this code. Uh, now, uh, the data, the, the complexity of that data model should be as follows. You have to have at least two domain objects. Now, a domain object, what it means is a non-human piece of data that 
that is peculiar uh, about the topic that you choose. Okay, say I choose um, uh, the, the topic of movies, yes? Well, a, um, a, 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 a common domain object uh, in the industry of movies is the movie. Movie, that's an object, right? That's a domain object. It's an object that is peculiar to the topic of movies, okay? Um, uh, also, it's non-human beings, right? So actor would not be a domain object, okay? An actor would not be a domain object. A fan would not be a domain object, right? A director would not be a domain object, okay? A camera is a domain object. Uh, a, um, uh, a playlist that contains many songs or playlists of movies, that's also an object, a, a, data, a domain object, right? So you have to have at least two domain objects and two user models, right? A user model, one might represent an admin, another one might represent a faculty, another one might represent a student with different, with different data that you are capturing about those types of users. Uh, you should have at least one one-to-many relationship, right? What I mean by one-to-many relationship is that, um, you know, whatever domain, whatever objects you might have, they might be related one to many, right? So for instance, um, I might um, uh, have a playlist, right? Might contain multiple songs, right? So one playlist can have many songs. So that's a two domain objects and there's a one to many between them, right? So you need at least one of those and you need a one many to many relationship, right? So many to many is like, uh, for instance, if you have an actor and you have a movie, and one actor can act in many movies and a movie can have many actors. So that's a many to many relationship. So you need at least one of those. Uh, these are just example uh, class diagrams that represent from previous projects, uh, an external web API, right? So yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, you need to have an uh, external web API, like for instance, the one I'm using here, uh, OMDB, but you know, there's tons of these, right? And so if you just search for something and it says, you know, you end up and you, and you a pen API, you'll get tons of things. So, you know, maybe weather API, right? So the um, weather API uh, and, and how to use it. Uh, or you can have a, maybe a sports API, sports, right? So there's, a, there's 143 sports API, uh, the top 10 best uh, sports API, the sportsdb.com, free sports data. Uh, so, so take a look at what, what, what's out there. There's, you know, for whatever topic you can think of, there's definitely to, bound to be a, um, an API for you. Uh, there's also some curated uh, lists of, of APIs here in programmable web uh, that you can also search. Uh, so for instance, here, if you say stock, right? So, so this gives you all sorts of stock API, you know, the stock quote API, the Fin Hub Stock API, the Stock News, the uh, Adobe Stock API, right? So, so you can, you know, for whatever topic you can think of, there's going to be an API that gives you data. And I would get started now and make sure that whatever API you are selecting, uh, it's going to be useful for completing the uh, the final project. Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, what else? I think that's it. All right, any uh, questions on the project before we continue? All right, so let's, uh, let's go on. Let's see. Um, we have uh, HTML. Okay, so, so we're already talking about the project. Let's discuss the, uh, let's talk about HTML. Right, so we did discuss HTML already. All right, let's see, there's something on the chat. Uh, can we use other programming language other than the ones listed? Yes, yeah, so for the project, you can. Right, so if you want to do something on Ruby on Rails or Python or, uh, or any language uh, you prefer for the middle tier, sure. You know, and from the front end, we're going to be covering React.js, but if you feel more comfortable with something else for the front end, go ahead. Um, if you feel more comfortable with a different database, go ahead. If you feel better with a different middle tier, go ahead, okay? But obviously we're not gonna cover uh, all of them and we might not be experts at that particular technology. So you might have limited support, okay? Uh, just a second.
Okay, so let's talk about HTML. So a lot of what we're gonna be covering here are, is gonna be a review of what we already discussed uh, when we talked about the assignments, okay? Uh, let's see, it looks like there's a question on the chat. Uh, has the SPA has to be, oh yeah, single page application. So definitely, yes, it has to be single page application. Yep. And we'll talk about what a single page application is a little later when we get to React.js. Uh, so what is HTML? Uh, so it's a hypertext markup language. We talked about that, right? That you can have you know, static content that is not marked up, right? That has no style, but uh, when you know, HTML allows you to wrap content, right? So that you can let the browser know how is that you want to render or style uh, that particular content. Uh, it allows you uh, to create a hypertext um, content, right? That, that you can convert to text that would otherwise be just plain text, right? You can convert it into hypertext, right? That uh, it can have actions, that it can have behaviors associated as opposed to just display content, right? That you can click on it and maybe navigate somewhere. Um, and creating a web page is very simple. It's just an ASCII file, right? Just text file that has the extension HTML and the browser knows that it should interpret it as HTML. Uh, so inside you can have Jane, maybe just content as hello that world, hello, hello world. And, and that's, that, that's it. You have, a, a, you have a, an HTML page, right? Um, you can also add comments. Uh, that allow you to, you know, add information about uh, the content so that, you know, if you, you, you don't remember, uh, so you can write some comments so that you can come back a little later and know what the heck you were doing, you know, a month ago. Uh, so to do that, we use the, you know, the escape sequence less than bang dash dash and then dash dash greater than, right? Um, so the, all HTML documents have the following structure. They start off with document type HTML so that the browsers know that they're looking at an HTML document. Uh, they have a, um, you know, we use uh, XML tags to do this, right? So HTML is just basically a, um, a, a vocabulary. It's an XML vocabulary, right? So there's any number of vocabularies in XML of which HTML is just one of them. Uh, and vocabulary is just basically a collection of words, right? Like a dictionary, right? Uh, and the words here in HTML are, are HTML, head, title, link, body, and a slew of other tags that we're going to be visiting today. Uh, so, so yeah, so the, the actual content uh, that you see the, uh, displayed in the screen goes in the, in the body, right? And whereas in the head, uh, you put some meta information about maybe, you know, any dependencies that this particular document has with other doc documents, uh, or maybe you can put like the author when the document was created, things like that. Um, in, um, so yeah, document type is there so that the browser knows uh, what, um, you know, what, what, how to interpret this document. You have the, the root uh, elements, right, that have several embedded elements under there. Right, so for the all HTML documents have this outer HTML tag, opening and closing tag, and then you have two sub tags under there, either the head and the body. Again, head is for some meta information, and the the that you right you can put any dependencies that this document might have with other documents, right? Like style sheets, right? Um, also, you can put in there the title of the documents. Uh, now, putting the, the title of the document is basically, uh, you know, putting whatever title you want here for the tab. So if I, if I, you know, if I look at this, uh, there should be a title in there. Um, and so, for instance, right, so here we say have course modules, right? So if we if we look at the source code uh, for this HTML, uh, we should be able to look at the title, and we should be able to see course. Uh, what is it? Course modules, right? So let's search for title. There it is. See this title? See course modules, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, is shown here. See that right there? All right, so, so that is displayed in the tab. Um, all right, so that's, that's the title. But the, the core content of the HTML page goes in the body. Yeah, so like this hello world is going to go in, in the body. All right, so let's continue. The, the, um, 
Now, white spaces, as I mentioned earlier in our previous lectures, right, the white, white spaces are ignored, even though you might add tabs or, or, or new lines, right, because you're splitting it up so that it looks nice, right, the, the, um, the browser ignores all, all your white spaces, right? So to do the layout, you know, that you want new spaces and whatnot, you need to add an additional formatting. So for instance, you might use paragraphs like the opening P and the closing P, right? To add vertical spacing and maybe some margin between, between each paragraph, right? You can also use headings. Headings are useful for introducing new, to, new, new content, right? So you can have, you know, a really big heading at the top of the document, maybe a little smaller to introduce subsections and then you know, even smaller ones to introduce, you know, sub, sub, subsections, right? And, and so here's an example of having a, a top level uh, heading HTML. And we are talking maybe about all the HTML tags. Maybe we're talking about all the paragraphs and the headings. And those are subheadings, right? For talking about individual uh, topics. Uh, you can also use lists as, I, as we did um, uh, last uh, lecture, right? We use lists to uh, create hyperlinks uh, to other documents, right? You can have either unordered lists, UL, UL, right? Or you can have ordered lists, right? So the unordered list here, uh, it uses bullets to, to uh, identify each one of the line items, whereas the ordered list has the numerals. Now, order lists, right, is uh, using OL, and then the line items that you are creating bullets for, like over here, uh, and the on order list is using UL and on, on order list is basically uh, the bullets, okay? Uh, tables, as I mentioned earlier, should only be used for displaying tabular, for, uh, tabular data, okay? Never should this be used for laying out content on the page. Although I've seen some folks, uh, some professional folks use tables for laying out, it's generally considered to be a bad practice, okay? Um, so reduce tables last, uh, last time we met uh, for uh, for actually displaying uh, courses, right? Courses and many many rows of courses, and but then several columns for those courses. Um, you you know at the top of the the table, the table can either have a head uh, where you 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 describe the the headings uh, for all the columns in the table, uh, but the actual data, the core data, is in the T body. Here's an example of using the T head. Uh, for uh, introducing a row of, of headings, right? Username, password, first name, last name, and role, right? And we're leaving the last one empty. Uh, and then here in the body, right? We're, we're showing that we are displaying um, a, a particular row about Alice, and presumably there's another row down below about Bob. Okay, so we'll get to practice this uh, quite a bit in the next assignment. We're gonna create a table and you know, with rows and columns, they want to be able to add rows, remove rows, and, and, and be able to interact uh, with the table that way. Uh, there's also input fields, you know, for creation, creating forms uh, and asking for folks about information. Uh, we can ask them for an, a, a single input field, like a single line. Um, and, and there's many data, many types, right? So again, we, we looked at this uh, last time we met and implemented the profile screen, right? And where we introduce uh, using uh, input fields, drop downs, selects, uh, there's plenty more. Uh, we, we, we took the, the date picker, right? Uh, you know, declaring as the date of birth uh, and, and the, uh, the type being dates, that's what causes the date picker to come up, right? There's also a drop down uh, where you can have multiple options that you can click on, right? And then shows you any options that you can select for that option. Uh, there's also buttons and radios, radios and checkboxes that uh, radios, uh, buttons, right? You can use the button uh, tag and um, uh, there's different types of buttons, right? There's submit and there's button. Now submit typically is used within a form, right? A form that is meant to be submitted uh, to a server that you have input fields that you're filling out. And, and when you submit it, the form gathers all that information and then posts it to the server, right? And then the server can then post process all that information, uh, maybe add it to a database and whatnot, right? Uh, there's also check boxes and radio buttons. We'll play around with this uh, next week uh, where you can, um, 
you know, so, uh, implement a either a mutually exclusive set of buttons that you click one and the other one gets unchecked. Uh, or if you have multiple, you know, for instance, if you have uh, like a favorite color, uh, just one favorite color, you can maybe use radio buttons, right? And you can only choose one exclusively. Or you can have, uh, uh, you know, multiple favorite colors, right? And then you can select the ones you like, with the checkboxes, okay? Anchors, we saw last week, we, we use them to be able to navigate from one page to the other, right? We, we are not going to do that anymore. We'll, we'll, we'll do that this assignment and the next, and then that's it, right? And then never again. Uh, we'll use uh, uh, links for something else, right? We're going to, we're going to hijack the navigation uh, mechanism, right, so that we can implement single page applications. We'll introduce that when we get to React.js. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, so I'm going to leave this demo for next week because we're going to be, it's, it's relevant to the next assignment, right? So, so I'll demo this user admin next week uh, when it's more relevant. All right, so let's talk about CSS, right? So HTML is the language for describing the content, right? Of where, you know, um, what the layout might be, what, uh, well, not the layout, the actual content, right? What the headings are, the paragraphs, uh, the lists and whatnot, but the what it looks like, right, is not meant to be configured by HTML. Instead, uh, it has grown to be complex enough that it has its own language. It has its own engineers, right? It's a and you could totally make a living of making pages look pretty. Okay, uh, engineers usually don't have uh, an eye for making things look uh, polished and finished, right? So. You need a you know a good set of skills to make things look professional. Uh, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about the CSS. So CSS stands for cascading style sheets, uh, and they can be applied at different layers le levels, right? They can be applied directly on the on the element on the tag uh, by using the style attribute and and the areas that you want to configure. You know, what the foreground color is, what the background color is, any any borders, um, you know, whether there's margin, there's padding, whether you want to position it exactly where you want it, right? So you can do all that with CSS, right? And this is an example of the language. Uh, basically, it's um, it consists of uh, many properties that you can configure about the look and feel. So this is this is a one a way of doing it right on the element. Now, this is a very bad way of doing it. You should never do it this way. Okay, a slightly better way of doing it is to uh, apply these styles, okay, but apply it in the style uh, elements, right, in the style tags. And the way this works is that here we are, we, um, you know, styles, uh, CSS styles are, are, um, are, are basically rules, rules that are triggered by pattern matching the left-hand side of the rule with with the content of the document, right? If it pattern match, if it matches, then the rule is applied to those elements that are matched. Right? So this is saying that I'm pattern matching all paragraphs, and I'm going to change their alignment to be centered, right? Instead of the the default left hand side left left justified. Okay. Now this is slightly better, but it's still a bad practice. Okay. The very best way of doing it is to declare all your styles in a separate file, okay? And so some external file, presumably a CSS file, right? And this CSS file can live either locally in your file system, or it could be some HTTP request that goes and fetch the style from some repository somewhere else, right? Uh, so let's uh, let's play around with, uh, with uh, these styles, some really simple ones. Here are... Uh, three paragraphs, and, and I've gone ahead and and um, add, used the uh, style attribute, right, to directly change the color of the of this paragraph. Obviously, I just told you it's a bad practice, and I'm here. I'm doing it. I mean, for pedagogical reasons, right? That um, you know, for educational reasons, that's fine. Right? But I would never uh, make something like this av you know, publicly available uh, for production. Okay. Uh, and I'll show you the alternative. So the alternative of doing this and you know, applying a, a background color, and then here I'm applying a foreground color, and I'm sorry, 
a background color, and then a foreground white color, and the same thing in background red and color white, the foreground color white. A better way of doing it is to rip all these styles and not do this ever again. Instead, put it here in the style tag. Again, this is slightly better, right? And the way this works is that uh, here, instead of using the style tag and putting the styling right on the element, instead, I have bound this element to a class, right? These classes can have arbitrary names, uh, but usually uh, a, a best practice is for them to be all lowercase and use dashes. Um, and so, so here's a class that I've created, right? I say class, and, and then I've, um, I've configured it over here. I said that background yellow, right? There it is. Um, it's going to try and pattern match and try and pattern match the, all the elements whose classes are whatever this matches. So this one, for instance, this one matches that one. That means that this particular, this particular rule will fire and we will use the um, transformation that are listed in the rules to apply it on that element. So in this case, it's applying the background color yellow. So this is, becomes yellow. Uh, if we go a little further, notice that we have also some background blue and background red, right? And there they are, background blue and background red. And they're both changing the background to that respective color. So that, that means that here, these two are definitely gonna be blue and, and red. But notice that I can apply more than just one class uh, onto the class attribute, right? So for instance, I'm applying blue here and I'm applying color white. Let's see color white. Uh, now, I, the reason I know that these are classes are being applied here and pattern match is that these have a period in front of it. See that? That period means that I'm going to try and pattern match a class, right? That's what the period means. I'm trying to pattern match a class. Okay, and I can have multiple classes applied to the same element. So for instance, I can give it the blue color. And at the same time, I can give it the foreground color to be white. This paragraph is blue background and white foreground. Okay, now, so this was, this was okay, kind of terrible of using style attributes. This was slightly better, right? We're using the style tag. And this is absolutely the best. This is what you should do instead, right? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna move all those rules, CSS rules, and we're gonna make a, a separate file, the style CSS files, right? And paste in there all the styles that we want to reuse throughout the project. And then you can then link it, right? You can link and say, oh, load that CSS file, right? Because I want to apply all those styles to the page. All right, so let's talk about some basic styling, some things that you should know by heart, you know, just memorize these things. And, you know, as you progress, you know, many of these will become uh, trivial. You know, so first of all, let's talk about the foreground color. Uh, so you should be able to know how to change the foreground color, right? Uh, and the way you do that is very easy. You use, you use the property color and then, the, then the, and then blue or yellow or red. Now these colors are uh, fairly standard, right? They are available. Lots of these colors are available. Definitely the primary colors are there, secondary colors. And then you can then add uh, other modifiers like maybe light blue or dark blue, right? So you can add that at the beginning, right? And usually that color is a valid color. All right, so, so there we go. So we have this uh, foreground blue. And now we're gonna add another one here with the background to be yellow. That's, that's why this is now yellow. And um, uh, now, here I want to point out the you know how to style fonts right so fonts and, and you know in the cursive color of the, of the text um, used to be with dedicated elements of the HTML language such as B for bold I for italic and U for underline these have somewhat fallen out of favor we don't use them anymore as they uh, they were intended uh, instead we leave uh, any styling issues to C to uh, CSS. Um, all right, so, so for instance, instead of, um, instead of using bold, for instance, today we use CSS font, uh, font weight, right? So that we can specify whether it's bold, whether it's um, extra bold, or you can even provide a number here on how much you want your, your, your text to be bold, right? So here we are configuring this, this, um, uh, this text over here in, in this span. 
All right, so spans, spans kind of behave uh, uh, backwards from the way divs behave. Both div and span are used for grouping logical elements that go well together, right? And what div does, div, uh, you know, not only the, it groups the elements, but it also adds vertical spacing, right? Whereas span also groups uh, multiple content, but it doesn't add vertical spacing. It stays, it flows the content from left to right, from top to bottom. Uh, all right, let's talk about the box model. So box model is, is how the browser uh, calculates where things are gonna happen, where are they gonna show on the screen, okay? And it uses these four, um, uh, four concepts. One is the margin. So margin, right, is the space in between the, so say this is my content. My content is this slide, right? Uh, so, so this this slide has margin, right? Meaning a, a space all around the object, right? That separates it from other objects, right? So that's the margin. Uh, there's also border. Border uh, is kind of like see all this this uh, uh, um, invisible black over here. Uh, so it looks like that, that's a border. See that? Well, you can configure how wide you want that border. You know, what's the thickness of the border? Whether you want it dotted, whether you want it dashed. Right, whether you, whether you want it embosed, right, or beveled, right. So you can you can choose all sorts of of, uh, of variants. Now padding is the internal space. Like for instance, this B from the from the border. There's also some span as uh, padding all around, right, above and below. And finally, there is the actual content. Like this is the actual content, right. Um, and so we're going to be working on with all these uh, this uh, semester. Um, yeah, so you can you can change each one of these independently. So like for instance, you can say margin twenty, and boom, you get you get some space in between the the, the different objects. Let's see a question in the chat. A quick question: Style belongs to HTML like property of HTML. We just organize them in a CSS file for many for many convenience. The style in the HTML. Uh, but it's considered to be bad practice, right? Because it, it makes it so much harder to maintain the HTML, right? And if you want to do uh, cross HTML or uh, you know wide uh, website across the website, you want to change the look and feel. You don't want to have to be forced to go into each one of the pages and change those styles. Uh, so a better practice is to rip all that CSS outside of the HTML and put it in a separate uh, file so that it can be used in multiple files. And you can style multiple files at the same time. Okay, so for for um, for maintenance purposes, uh, you don't leave it inside of the HTML. But yes, that's where they belong. Uh, all right. So styling the styling the uh, the box model, you can uh, you can change margins independently. Uh, you can change it over the entire margin all around. Maybe you want a ten pixel margin all around. Uh, or you can do it individual. You can say like the top margin, the bottom margin, the right margin, the left margin. Same thing for the borders. You can have like a, an overall border around, or you can say borders on the, on, you're going to change the border on the left, on the right, and whatnot. So let's give you a couple examples. Right, before we get to that, uh, let's uh, talk maybe this, this, um, this might be better here. Uh, yeah, so the the block the um, the block versus inline discussion is that uh, the browser uses these two techniques to calculate, you know, where something on the screen is going to land, right? So it needs to figure out that okay, this is going to be displayed here and this below and this and this and I'm going to move this slide a little bit to the right. So and the way it does that is by using two algorithms. One is called the block algorithm. Right, and what block does is that it um, um, it decides that uh, the content is going to take as much space as you give it, okay, uh, and and then and then you know um, whatever's in in that block right, is going to be separated from other content vertically, right? We're going to add some space in between, like for for instance, headings and paragraphs behave that way. We saw that paragraphs. Right, uh, they they um, uh, you know they take up the entire width of the page, right, and then they add margins below and above. Headings do the same thing, right? They take the content, they make it really really big and bold, right, and then they 
they add vertical spacing, right? So, so definitely these two behave like blocks, right? Also divs is a very, it's a generic block element, right? That you can put it, things in there and then separate them vertically. Now there's the other uh, algorithm that uh, HTML uses is called the inline, right? And basically these are elements that uh, flow from left to right, from top to bottom. Uh, and you know, when, you, when, it, when you have no more space on the right-hand side, they just flow, right? Uh, so they flow from left to right, from top to bottom, right? And, and there's many elements that uh, certainly text behaves that way. Text behaves inline, right? This is flowing from left to right. You know, if I make this a little smaller, notice that it starts wrapping. See that it wrapped, there's no more space. Okay, it's using, all this text is using the, the, um, the inline uh, method of display, okay? Uh, and with, the, with this combination of block and inline, you can pretty much put everything on the screen. Um, so a couple of uh, elements that behave this way, you have uh, normal text, you have span, input, they all behave uh, a flow, right? They all flow from left to right, right? One after another, just like text, right? And then when there's no more space, it just wraps around, right? So that's inline. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's uh, play around with styling uh, some block and inline elements, right? So we, we said earlier, H1 behaves like a block. Paragraphs also behaves like a block. Text in general behaves uh, inline. Okay, span behaves inline. So notice this uh, H1 is a block. Notice that it's take, taking up the uh, you know as much white area space as it can, right? Um, and then it adds the vertical spacing in between. Now, the text inside the block H1, the text inside behaves inline. See that? Notice that it doesn't fit, doesn't fit, right? And then it wraps around uh, to to continue. Right, but then there's a there's a there's a spacing below which is added by the block element h1. This paragraph, same thing, it's adding some space above and below, right? But the content inside, right, is uh, is is uh, like an inline, right? When there's no more space, it just wraps around. Uh, normal text behaves inline all by itself. The space above and below are being added not by it; it's being added by the paragraph above. And it's also being added by this breaking uh, down below, okay? Span doesn't add any space uh, above and below, right? It just flows logically from left to right. So for instance, the span elements right here, there they are, span elements. Uh, render inline, see that? Another span. Uh, and doesn't matter, right? It just flows from left to right, right? And these four, the, these four words happen to be in the same line even though they might have been uh, drawn and you know, written here in separate lines. All right, so let's add some color to these uh, styles, to these uh, headers, uh, paragraphs and spans and whatnot. Uh, so let's uh, add yellow background to this particular style, this uh, particular uh, H1 here, and make, make, let's make this paragraph to be blue. And then these each one of these spans, well, let's make them red, okay? Um, all right, so let's, let's uh, have some fun with this. Uh, so let's see. Um, so let's uh, let's take the, those uh, those two span uh, objects, right? That that they were at some point were these right here, span elements, right? Span elements, um, and there they are, span elements. We turned them black, uh, red, both of them. And so let's add some borders, right? So how do you do the border? So so first let's add some background color to be red. There it is. The the color background is red. Uh, to both of them is being applied. And then we have border solid, right? Meaning I want the border of this person to be solid uh, and 10 pixels wide, right? And the border color is red, I mean green, whereas the span elements in the text content is yellow, uh, red. red. Um, all right, we did the same thing to both boxes here. Let's go further, a little further. Uh, how about down below here? Uh, let's add some margins, right? So remember, this heading over here was, didn't have any margins on the left, right? Almost no margins on the right. This is what it used to look like. See that? Almost no space above, no space on the left-hand side. But when we use margin, notice that we're adding a 10 pixel margin uh, around all, all around the whole content, whereas before it was taking the, it was taking up the entire width of the screen. You see that, right? Uh, but adding margins, 
right? It's flush. It's, it's no longer flush, right? We, it's ten pixels away from the from the um, from the border. Um, we can also put padding. Padding is again the space that is shown uh, inside the, uh, the 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 uh, the 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 border, right? So notice that before the text was just flush uh, with the um, with the border, right? But by adding padding, notice that now there's some space uh, between the, the 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 borders. Right here, where we can add all of these, you can add either an overall padding or margin, right? That is the same across you know all around, or you can apply padding or margins, right? You can or borders, right? You can apply them only to the top or left. See that it says the left is ten and top is ten. See that, that how there's some space above and left, but not below and on the right. Okay, so that's how you can, you can either do one overarching padding or two and, 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 um, uh, and then independent above, below, top, left, right. And size and position. Um, all right, so I'm gonna stop here. And when we come back on, uh, on Monday, we will continue and finish up uh, this content, the CSS. If you could please, if you could please finish up uh, taking a look at uh, all these uh, all these slides, uh, a lot of it is uh, refresh uh, on on and and revisiting Bootstrap and taking a look at Font Awesome again, real briefly. If you could please take a look at that, um, that'd be great, so that we can finish up uh, on Monday and and start talking about the uh, next assignment. Okay. All right, I'm gonna leave it here. Any any questions? No questions? All right, everyone. Uh, thank you. Have a great night and take a take care. Have a nice weekend and see you all on Monday. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Take thank care. You. Have a good one. Bye-bye.